Hello and welcome to episode 100 of the Ono oh Video Games podcast. Uh, it's a big number. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host, as always, Martin Fulder, joined today in the flesh by my good friends Tom Smith. Uh, shit, I forgot to think of a joke. Sorry. My, <laughs> keeping, keeping the quality back. <laughs> my good friend Joshua. Do we get a letter from the royal baby now? <laughs> <laughs> and my good friend Matt Jones. No, fuck it. Let's, no. <laughs> <laughs> and today, special guest joined by Patrick Kidd. Hello. And Leia. Who, Hi. I forgot your last name. Really great. <laughs> that's, 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 that's cool. Um, but yeah, we have people here. We're in an actual place, everybody. Yeah, we're yeah. It's all together. We yeah. can see each other. We drank yeah. a beer. A little bit hungover <laughs> yeah. for episode 100. It was an episode 100 pie, I've decided. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, to do with it being Halloween, Jillian's birthday, yeah, yeah. and... All the other shit. A what different else? thing, <laughs> maybe? I don't know. It's so episode good. 100. <laughs> yeah. Did we just come up with that? It's a title immediately. <laughs> <laughs> we've, got to, we've got to top that now. We've got no notes or anything. Uh, it's, all oh, downhill. Right. Yeah. it's all downhill from this point. We've got yeah. to work the, that other episode title in somehow. Oh, sure. oh yeah. 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 Don't don't say it now. We'll find a way. <laughs> What, See if you can spot sure it, it during the show. <laughs> uh, you had your first experience playing Masquerade with us last night. If you I remember did. any of it, I, I wasn't that drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't forget the night drunk. <laughs> okay. I was be bad at board yeah. games drunk. But... <laughs> sure. No, I won, didn't I? Uh, I did. Yeah, I won. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. I, I'm great at yeah, Masquerade board games. Yeah. Yeah. And board games. I'm great at love. I'd yeah, be everyone at love, yeah, love there as well. Multiple yeah. sorts of tokens of affection. Yeah. Love that is so good. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's really good. Game. I adore love that. Yeah, it's just great how like it's so simple that every rule is written right in front of you, and you yeah. don't really need to know anything, and yeah. you can still play it successfully. Because <coughs> uh, I I think that there is we've talked about this so extensively, like the idea of competitive gaming not really benefiting from too much mechanics. Actually, being better for just being able to explain it immediately, and then yeah. the mind game happened. Like we just played a game of the Resistance now with Layla, who's never played it before, and yeah, we had the pretty oh. fucking great rounds. It was Avalon had, yeah, rules, yeah. Yeah. Also. yeah. Even Masquerade, you didn't play that before last night. No, no, yeah. Masquerade, sort of yeah. at the higher end of that complexity. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mas Masquerade's ultimately a game about paying attention. Mm. Really well. Yeah, sure. it's keeping <laughs> yeah. track of the flow of information. Yeah. Even though that information might not always be reliable. Yeah, yeah, it's, absolutely. It's keeping track of possibilities. Yeah. You know, I could have this or that, which means yeah. they could have this or that. I think it's about understanding needs and wants of the other players as well. Like, yeah. you know that when somebody's taking one thing, they're doing that because in a turn from now, they want this ability. Yeah. But mm. does it benefit them more to pretend that they're having this ability or to try and fix it? So it's not like even just about the poker face of like, oh, well, they're pretending to take. It's about like, you know, what do they want in this situation in order for them to even consider that? See, I feel like I really like Masquerade, but I'm really crap at it because sure. my brain just checks out immediately. Yeah, I, yeah, I just like, lose interest. I'm not not lose interest, but I I get distracted by shiny things really quickly. <laughs> and I because I, I was playing it drunk last night, and my attention span when I'm drunk is even smaller. So I looked at my card and then put it down and then went off to do something else and didn't, absolutely didn't look at who everybody else was at the beginning. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's the reason why I feel like my uh, my resistance game works well, which is just insist that I'm trustworthy and everyone else is a spy. <laughs> like, I can do that without paying too much attention. But when it comes to a game like Masquerade, I'm just I'm screwed. Like, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I find I'm much better at Masquerade than there's more people, which is weird. <laughs> Because sure. there's so much more to keep track of. Well, it's less that you need to keep track of it. It's more that you can sort of hide away in the fold where, like, people are yeah, all doing their own there's thing. there's that. And also, in a bigger game of Masquerade, I find there's less swapping. Sure, yeah. Because everybody has their own strategy set, yeah. so they don't... Like, when you're playing with an Inquisitor, that's the hot commodity on that table. Everybody wants to be the Inquisitor. Yeah. But then all the rest of it's sort of fair game for you to just, you know, be a witch and get some money off people. Yeah. Or, yeah. It's a good like, game. Some, some of the best ones are just when everyone else is playing very specific games by themselves, mm -hmm. and you know what you're doing. Yeah, you're hanging out winning. Yeah you're, yeah, you're sitting there just doing your thing, keeping quiet until someone realizes you have 12 it coins. Is, <laughs> it, is, yeah. it is a really sound strategy to be someone like the um, the queen or the bishop, who yeah. just like gradually keep getting coins rather than the big plays of like, you think you're winning, but now me. <laughs> I do love that money level is yeah. the economy. It's so yeah. Yeah. Really smart. Yeah. yeah. Just, it's always yeah. growing, always growing. Yeah, yeah. Like Eventually people. someone has to win. Yeah. There's no way this game can go on forever. Yeah. yeah. I just find a good way to play Masquerade is to do the opposite 
of what you just said and being <laughs> a person who's like directing everyone else. Be yeah. like, no, listen, this person's doing this and that person's doing that. No. And everyone's paying, you make everyone pay attention to everyone else. Yeah, sure. And like, hope, um, hope they don't turn their gaze on you. They get that's exactly second. how you play the resistance. <laughs> I played, yeah. played quite an interesting game uh, the other day. It's like a 50s game from Waddington. It's called Scoop. And it's kind of got the opposite of Masquerade where once the money has left the system, it never comes back. Sure. So you've only got like finite resources. It's not like Monopoly where you can get money from rent or anything. You start with twenty five hundred pounds or whatever, and then once that's gone, you know if you if you need something for your newspaper, then uh, it's tough. Kind of, and I like that. <laughs> the, the two extremes of the kind of uh, economic system. We, is we, good. Should, we should play that. It's a good game. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit racist because cool. it's from the fifties, but <laughs> right. it's, otherwise it's. it's so we good. need to find like a newer version. <laughs> I don't, oh, sadly, I don't think there is. But oh, uh, okay. <laughs> You can take the racist bits out, so it's fine. Yeah, well, it's, we can just call it satire, and then we're yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> satire level. Yeah. Do, do whatever you want. <laughs> Make sure you put satire in the headline, and you're good. <laughs> I'm having some trouble with political intent in a video game right now. Yeah? I'm playing take us home. Batman Arkham Origins, <laughs> which I'm having increasingly difficult times with um, emulating. Not emulating, just like responding to what Batman is doing. Where like he's totally a dude that's absolutely okay with torturing people yeah. and then mm. pretending that he's really great and like noble and also that one of the villains paints himself as um, an anarchist who wants to ov- overthrow capitalist systems mm-hmm. but then like he does a, a video broadcast and you see him on some TVs going like I'm the I do all these great stuff for Gotham. I'm going to take down all of these oppressive regimes. And then you walk out and somebody goes, he's set up three bombs around the city and you need to deactivate them. <laughs> uh, just, it's like, that's such terrible moral equivalence. It's so, it's so lazy. Yeah. I feel like that would like Bane in the latest Batman movie as well. Mm. It's just like, you're completely on his side. And then it's just like, oh, well, he's actually just going to blow up the city for some reason. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like, if it was anything apart from that, up to that point, you're like completely on side with him and then they just add he's gonna kill everyone for marks because he's the bad guy or something I don't know they, they realise that we completely empathise with him otherwise you know? yeah I've been thinking more about like Batman's ability to give money through the Thomas and Martha Wayne Foundation for mm-hmm. him to just be like funneling all of his money into philanthropic efforts to raise the uh, ability for Gothamites to get to work on time or <laughs> to like uh, just fix a bunch of shit but nobody has to absolutely go absolutely scope for an indie game where you play yeah. as Batman but, but like alternate universe Batman where he's just a philanthropist yeah, yeah. it makes more sense yeah. for him. but like uh, uh, he's just a philanthropist with Batman pajamas <laughs> <laughs> Batman the reading of Batman makes way more sense if you see him as not somebody that actively wants to get rid of crime he just wants to punch people that do it yeah. because like his origin story is like a criminal who shot my mum and dad I don't hate crime I hate criminals yeah. for doing their crimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't hate the bullet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and also, I think oh, uh, no, Arkham Origins is just fucking lazy design. Like, there's so much in it. Like, I don't like needless uh, activity. Like, sure. I don't know if you've played many. I'm looking at you directly, Tom. For the audience, <laughs> I don't know if you've played many of the the Arkham games. I've played both of them. Yeah. Does it I've get you the, the tapping in the A button to open a grate? That that's annoying. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's always been annoying. Yeah, I, I think it's game. false interactivity, yeah. right? and it also it's like interactivity that doesn't justify itself. Because I mm. think you're um, when you're repeatedly tapping something to show the stress of the character then I think you have to have that character be weak and then overcoming an obstacle. Yeah, sure. Because otherwise they're just a strong dude doing a thing. Right, it's just like, this great is like... It's so tough. really tough. I'm exerting myself, even though I am a hero fantasy. Yeah. And I don't it's think like, that... It's like the treasure chests in God of War are really yeah, tight. Exactly. You know? Or like, a door, like <laughs> Kratos is like the strongest man who's ever lived, but he's just like, I can't quite get this door open. Yeah, yeah. I need to push it a little bit harder. You need to help me out, the player. I think that's just false. I think it's um, interactivity for interactivity's sake. It doesn't bring anything to the table. No. It's just like, oh, we realised opening doors, you're just opening the door, so we figured we'd add this thing to make mm-hmm. opening doors a bit of a fuck. Yeah, like, and it's inconsistent as well, because <laughs> yeah. there are doors that are exactly the same weight as the ones that are difficult to get open. He's just going like, well, well that's open now. <laughs> yeah, I, I just like consistency of design, and not 
fucking, I'm gonna keep talking about why I don't like this video game. Go for it. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that's just really lazy about <laughs> setting and place. Like, Arkham Asylum was cool because it had this one distinct setting. It, you were in Arkham Asylum, and there weren't gonna be many people around. There were gonna be the inmates, uh, and, uh, you know, they had their own sections where they were doing their own thing. And then he went to Arkham City, which was this town that was taken over, and all of the residents were rejected in favor of just, like, it being a um, prison. Mm. And now this takes place in Gotham before Arkham was put up. And there are no people. Uh, it, it feels so weird to be in a city that is this lively metropolis, and you're doing... Like, your justification for doing anything that started the game was that um, there's a hit put out on you, and you want to get ahead of it before... Uh, the people put innocent people in danger in order to drive Batman out. But you can't have that justification if you don't see any innocent people. Yeah. You're just in a city that is black. <coughs> if the city is like a ghost town. Yeah, then... it's it's lazy for them to not think of a way to like justify why there's nobody around other than it's a bit cold out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd be uh, see that just makes me think that you, you you're asking for like a, a Batman open world game. But no, like, I just yeah, think, yeah, I can see why they don't, like they, they don't want it. They don't want to have Batman <laughs> GTA. <Yeah. laughs> you don't want Batman to be able to punch punch a regular people. Yeah, yeah. yeah but what you do what you do in that case is you make it so when you walk up to a regular person and press the punch button, and he does like a sh salute or some shit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm Batman. He poses for a picture. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Batman selfie. Yeah. 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 Oh shit! <laughs> oh, Batman selfie is such a missed opportunity. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. There are also some like set design stuff that I really like, uh, like really dislike about how Gotham's this like really run down city, despite it being this metropolis. And so, like when you go to this fancy hotel, there it, it looks indistinguishable from like this run down auto shop, <laughs> where like all these broken cars are in there, and there are some hanging electricity wires that are sparking off, and like this is like the most upper-class hotel that you could go to where <laughs> people would be funneling in and spending, like, thousands of dollars a night on a room, and yet the garage of it looks just like a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> like, it, it doesn't make consistent sense for this to be a place where one thing... what One thing... It looks like one thing, but then doesn't seem it's, consistent it's not, with what it actually is. That's the problem is. with a lot of uh, like big games based in cities, because... As much as I like the early GTA games that were on the consoles, not you, there weren't really any distinguishable kind of features between the districts of the city. Mm -hmm. like they all looked exactly the same, and or, or like the only delineation was like this is where gangsters live, yeah. and you know, yeah, that's yeah. that's how you could tell it was a rough area because there were yakuza walking around or, or triads or whatever. Sure. But there was no like, oh, the the buildings get you know start to look worse. Maybe that's. Because they were on the PlayStation Two and they didn't yeah, have the graphic capacity to do it, but but now it just seems like even GTA Four wasn't. So I, actually, I'm gonna See, say, I disagree with that. I yeah. think GTA Four had very distinct. A, a, a cool thing about GTA Four was how they did um, specific roads. So in poorer sections of the world map, the roads have got like not potholes, but they've been covered in sort of really mm -hmm. like like a square of a chunk of concrete that doesn't look like the rest of the paving. So I find, yeah. like, like, I find GTA 4 to be more homogenous than the other ones because in the older games I could always find my way around the city mm -hmm. but in GTA 4 I would just be driving around and going I haven't got a clue where I am right now I could be I could be anywhere in the city. And See I couldn't around. find my way around but I feel like you've got a really distinct sense of place especially yeah. like and I think it is one of the problems if you, it's one of the reasons I don't think it's very easy to go back to GTA 4 but like because the first like twelve hours of that game all in the same mm. like fake Brooklyn, um, then you get a really distinct sense of it. Like I couldn't find my way around, but that's because I'm crap at finding my way around. And also the mini map was really good. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so yeah, you know, I, I thought that game had a really distinctive look. I thought yeah, really, I th know. yeah, that GTA Four's was it Liberty City. Yeah, it was it's, it's way, way more distinct than something like Steelport in mm. Saints Row Three. Yeah, yeah. Steelport's very generic. Yeah, uh, I like Steel. even more so in Saints Row Four. Yes, mm. yeah, mm. but it doesn't really matter. Uh, the thing is, you like, just jump up. Yeah. And see everything. Yeah. <laughs> all, all the roofs of these skyscrapers look the same. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, Saints Row's game would necessarily be like massively improved by having the, no, the no, same no. It, yeah, it's, it's having over a different thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And even like it has narrative justification for reusing assets yeah. as well, which is <laughs> the best way to go about it. Yeah, I, I um I like um 
No, I don't have it. Oh, well. <laughs> I was going to say, say sorry, what I really like about it is um, you always feel like they they reuse assets or they come up with ideas and then they think of the silliest possible reason for it to be in universe and they just go with it. It's that's, perfect. That's canon now. Yeah. You know? we, uh, we're in a simulation, I guess. Sure, let's do it. <laughs> they cut out that DLC pretty recently. Anyone played it yet? Doesn't seem like it's any good. Uh, the DLCs aren't generally. No, exactly. I, I, it seems like just a waste of, of effort at this point. Like, it seems like they have promises of DLC that you can like, oh, get the season pass and you will get a cool thing. But then that cool mm. thing never ends up being worth it. Mm. Which is yeah. just, I wonder what the shelf life of that whole idea of selling content is anymore. When people wise up to the idea that it's just going to be fucking half-assed that I've, they've done yeah, afterwards. Yeah, I've heard this one it seems like a a stopgap mm-hmm. until like the next Saints one. Saints save Christmas. Saints save yeah, Christmas. Yeah, Christmas. 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 <laughs> like a proper next one. Yeah. But this one is almost all all content that was going to be Enter the Dominatrix yeah. before they changed it to Saints Row 4 proper. And I think it's like less than an hour long. Mm, oh, wow. Lovely. I hear but, Arkham Origins is getting story DLC because they were too rushed to get it out. Oh, oh, Jesus. I know, right? <laughs> Fuck, I can't abide the idea that you're spending like the premium price, like the the amount that you can spend on a video game yeah. to get something that is obviously really rushed and like mm-hmm. say what you want about Bioshock's terrible story arc, but at least the it's set terrible. design had some fun. Yeah, that's what that's, I want to say. Yeah. <laughs> at least the set design had the effort to like do this majestic vistas mm-hmm. and like do a sense of place and make uh, uh, Columbia. A decent enough <laughs> yeah. looking world. But... Did you hear about the game that was we, put up on Steam, like a full price yeah. game, Dark Matter, um, yeah. put up on Steam, just didn't have an ending. Yep. Players would get like get through it, and then it would just be like, yeah. be continued. We've not finished this game yet. And uh, <laughs> I was, I've been reading about that. That's you. There's no more apparently. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, and and I believe it's been taken, taken off Steam. Yeah, it's been taken off Steam. Yeah, but it's like how there was a publisher. There were like mm-hmm. middle things yeah. for mm. getting to Steam. Uh, and yet somehow yeah and i i feel bad for people that are on a service like greenlight who can produce a finished game yeah and can't get it sold on steam whereas these people can just like find a publisher immediately get it on don't even fucking finish the thing yeah, yeah, yeah. sell it it wasn't on early access either there is no. a yeah. thing for games that aren't finished yeah. that just need a last bit of funding mm-hmm. yeah yeah so it's baffling. i don't know it's uh, it's a weird mm. situation with that I, uh, yeah, yeah. We're in a weird time generally mm. with all that stuff. Early access. I, I, I don't. I, I'm past giving a shit about stuff until it's out. You know, like I, I, I like that early access is actually cheaper now to get on rather than waiting for the full product. Like that's enough sure. of an incentive. I also wonder how, but how much it's like damaging some games though by mm. them not. They finish the game, and then they, nobody they gives haven't a shit got anymore. that buzz anymore. Yeah. Nobody gives a shit because like, oh, I paid this one. That's what I always thought about Kickstarter. Because mm-hmm. like Kickstarter is a great idea. Like you give people money to to make the thing, but by the time that they've made the thing, they can't sell it. Like seventy five percent of the people, yeah, have already yeah. bought it. So yeah. there are people that aren't <clears throat> willing to wait that long to get the game. Like I probably might not have given Devil Find the money if I'd known it was going to be this long. Oh, that point? Master Chalice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I mean, the other one, I actually didn't uh, do Master Chalice. But, uh, I mean, the Double Find Imagine. Adventure. Yeah. yeah. Like, if I had known that it was going to be this long, I probably wouldn't have. Mm. Well, I really like the, uh, the documentary videos. This isn't great. I'd but, stop, yeah, I still haven't seen it, actually. So, oh, I'm, I'm not getting my money's worth, really. Yeah. 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 I bet it's good. So, I just. Yeah. yeah. Some of them are amazing. Maybe while I finish Batman and I uh, am incredibly bored by it. <laughs> I'll just watch those. <laughs> or that or Swimming Anime, which I still haven't seen yet. Yeah, well, I've only watched the first episode, so I can't vouch like nice. strongly for Swimming Oh, wait, so that Swimming Trunks joke is in the first episode? That Swimming Trunks joke is actually from the seventh episode, which oh. literally was like, you have to Snapchat this to everyone. Right. <laughs> so get, to, get to that bit, so I can oh, show everyone the Swimming man. Trunks. Man, okay. <laughs> but there's, there's a lot of, lots, lots of Swimming Trunks and... It's, it's very self-serious, it seems, but it's quite funny. That's great. So, I'm glad yeah. that it's self-serious. Yeah, no, it's very, very serious about the swimming club, um, <laughs> which you yeah. have to respect. Uh, is this, like, a new thing in anime where it's all hunks? Uh, it's, it's, we're just well, watching it's, a, like, yeah, hunky anime. I guess it started with um, Oren High School Host Club. Yeah, probably the first so I don't watch much anime, but from what I know, like... Mm-hmm. It's... it's the, 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 I'm uh, watching it literally... The like, trope is called, then, like... Which is kind of gross, but it's called the reverse harem, yeah. where... Uh, a girl character shows up in a world that's like full of hunky dudes. Right. Yeah. And that's getting really popular. And it started with, um, uh, or in high school host club, which was about, uh, a girl shows up at this really posh school 
who have a host club where dudes who are very charming entertain women and they pay them. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really good anime, it's by the way. Fun. I'm watching yeah. that and K-On at the moment, which yeah. is about like an after school, like, like girls, like, like music club. It's fucking sick. It's so good. I'm watching so much anime <laughs> right now. Are you, um, are you watching Duck Anime? Duck Ballet Girl? Duck Ballet what's Girl? Yeah. What's that? I'm, I'm, I don't know what it's called, actually. So, um, you'll have to ask who she comes back. <laughs> we'll find oh. out. We'll fi- I'll put it in the link in the post. I'm show. digging K-On. I'll show you where you can get all of these animes. <laughs> yeah, I, want, I, I like visual novels for, for my, my <laughs> person showing up in a strange situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly <laughs> flirting with pigeons. Yeah, that's, pretty, <laughs> that's pretty great. I, I, I played a visual novel. Oh. Uh, this week, uh, it's Device Six. Oh yeah, uh, just a news game by Smogo. Yeah. Um, who I've said this before, are one of my favourite developers right now. Pretty good. They're very talented. Done Year Walk and Beat Snake Bandit. Yeah. Um, so Device Six is about you are a girl called Anna, and you wake up in this uh, weird castle place, and you're stuck there, and you have to try and get out. Basically, um, I'm about halfway through it so far um, but it's just really fascinating because the text is on the screen and you read through it and then there are pictures and sound that go with it as well and as you're scrolling along it's like the sounds will play at the right point um, and then there are puzzles in it as well that you have to solve but if the text like branches so when you've got a choice at, like oh, you come to a corridor and there's two ways to go uh, the way you make that choice is you uh, you then have to turn your iPhone or iPad and follow the text either going in one way or follow it going in another yeah. direction. Yeah, that's cool. So yeah. you're constantly like, I, I did a whole puzzle holding the phone upside down just because that's the way the text was. And I've just got to a bit where I have to hold the text up to a mirror to read it. Ah, oh, that's really cool. It's nuts. Um, I'm not really <laughs> sure where the story's going, but it's really cool. And the puzzle design is really good as well. Probably makes you think there's... Yeah, it's all like um, sort of riddles, word puzzles, sure. and things hidden in the environment. Uh, but the general conceit of it as well, device, why it's called device six. From what I can tell, this girl Anna. These spoilers. Do we have to put a break here? No, no. I don't want to spoil it. I want to play this. Was, this is all in the first chapter. Okay. Um, from what I can tell, she has some kind of device implanted in her which uh, translates her thoughts and memories into third-person narrative <laughs> text, which is what you're reading. Great. Right. And then it explains yes. that sometimes it can't process all the thoughts and it just has to spit them out in the first person. And so that's why you get like her thoughts in the middle of the text as well, which is just like in italics. It's like, why am I here? What am I doing? Oh, my God. Um, yeah, and it's no, like, that's... yeah, it's... Um, <laughs> oh. It explains, oh, like, oh, when, when the main character is, like, angry or confused or anxious, then it can't process those thoughts into third person, so it has to spit them out directly. There's going to be this one section where it's just, like, all massive scream of text of her yeah. being really upset. Yeah, about. maybe. Yeah. That's yeah. Oh, really cool. I love, like, the, the, the twist in the phone st- stuff like that, because it sounds like they're exploring the same stuff they're doing in Year Walk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. I love so that, well. like, one bit in Year Walk where you can't see the answer, so yeah. you've turn the thing upside down the thing just falls off the screen yeah, like, yeah. That's so smart yeah ah, it's yeah man really smart use of the um, you know the gyroscope mm. stuff but it doesn't feel gimmicky you know I yeah feel, something yeah. like that um, Square Enix game that came out a little while ago like that I can't remember what it was even called it was about like twisting your phone around as quick as possible in order to something number of deaths something like that yeah something. that felt really gimmicky like yeah. I'm gonna yeah. make you Flip this around as quick as possible oh, in order. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they do it in a really, yeah. they do it in a really natural way. Especially seeing it as it's like the device you're playing it on your iOS device is device, Built with is all device of these. six mm-hmm. is what this That's machine cool. is oh, cool. for the character. Mm. Um, and then you, as you go through the stories, explain like different iterations of these devices and how they worked. Um, and then there's really weird bit at the end of each chapter where it gives you a little survey about what you thought about the previous chapter mm. but like you know that's going it's, somewhere it's not like serious it's like what do you well yeah I guess it is because they ask like how what did you think of the interactivity in this last chapter mm. was it satisfactory the first one it's like it felt like I was giving actual review feedback and then it just gets weirder and weirder oh, as it goes that's on so cool so one, of, one of them is uh, it says um uh, like for statistical purposes, please input five stars here, <laughs> and you can choose not to oh, or great. not. Great. And one of them, 
Oh, okay, you shouldn't uh, say anymore because I nah. really want to see uh, that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's really, really, really good. So that's definitely um, what Simogo have been good at. I mean, what Year Walk was good about is just like the way that you already use your phone and just playing with that. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, it's, yeah. You know, like I already did stuff like scroll, like try and scroll past the bottom of the page. Yes, just yeah. For no reason. And I'm yeah, I'm and getting a really a weird feeling that I am like the person behind this story because I have the device six sure. in a way, and I'm like. Well, I must have been responsible for putting her in this situation, maybe? Because it's... I don't know. I'm only sure. halfway through, but... That's super cool. It, yeah. yeah, it's it's super, super cool. And there's some, like, Smogo. there's some, like, espionage... Are we calling it a Smogo so, Developer of the Year? I, yeah, I would... Well, the room too. Yeah. Oh, that's... Uh, actually, yeah, I got off track, because I wanted to talk about, like, the room as being part of that, just, like, understanding the constraints of the device that you've been mm. given, and also, like, trying to push that to, like, the end of what you can do with like, a single item and just exploring control schemes. Sure. Mm. And, yeah, Room 2. I'm very excited to see what they do. Wow. But, yeah. The epilogue was exciting, because I was just like, oh, yeah, I love this game. <laughs> excited for more of this. <laughs> if you want to talk about Rad Puzzles, there is um, Tetrabot & Co. Yeah, yeah. Tetrabot & Co. God damn. Te- Tetrabot & Co. is kind of incredible. It's, oh, God. It's really <laughs> <my favorite. laughs> so it's... So I only got it because I, I was, you know, I was just like on Rock, Paper, Shotgun and they just posted a review of this game and I'm, uh, you know, I started reading it and I'm like, oh, yeah. And then, you know, they're like describing it, it sounds like a cool puzzle game. I'm like, sure, I'll pick it up. And I just immediately played it on stream and like played through the first few levels. And it's like really, it's really, it's, so it's a grid-based puzzle game where you pick up blocks and you put blocks down um, and you've got to uh, collect uh, chunks of memory. You're a like nanobot and you've got to collect li- little like chunks of memory, three chunks of memory per level and get to the portal. And fix robots, I think is what you're doing. Um, and basically, it does everything I like in puzzle games. Just, oh god, it's so good. I like its ability to explain concepts in the critical path. Yeah. That's my favourite part. Yeah, it's got, it's got, like, <laughs> it never explains the mechanics, it just, like, shows you. It gives you a level, and like you're just like, okay, well, how do I get past this? Oh, I go around the lasers, like obviously. And then you know, next you've got a puzzle where you've got to turn off the laser. You're like, oh, well, now I understand that these switches turn these things off. And then later on, when that's switching it's the something else, Mega and... Man X principle, which yeah. is like making sure that you know where to go with little visual cues rather than sure. putting up a sign that says, hey, you got to jump over the thing. And it's it's really smart about the the level design is incredible. So so yeah, each level has three gold memory chunks that you've got to collect and like sometimes you you will just be like i have no fucking idea how the fuck i'm gonna get to this 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 seems totally just impossible but you never gain more powers you never gain more abilities you everything you can move around you can pick blocks up you can spit blocks out and you can like yeah that's it those are those are the ways you can interact with i I like that a little less than the swapper which like doesn't give you new abilities but then makes you consider new things that you can do with the abilities you already have no yeah but that's that's what this does because because... i think it's different because then it introduces new blocks well sure no but you go back to an old puzzle Mm -hmm. right so so okay there's a level i don't know there's a level where there's a gold thing and you, you you see it and you have no idea how to get to it it's just on the other side of a room and you're like okay with the stuff i have i have no idea how it's even possible to Mm -hmm. get this over there I don't know. And then, you know, you play, you just, you know, play through some more levels. And then eventually, in the critical path of a later level, will be, you will have to do the thing that you will have to do to do the optional thing in this really early level. Mm-hmm. So eventually, it teaches you all the mechanics, like mm-hmm. in the critical path. And eventually, you'll learn how to do all this, all this bullshit with, with these blocks. Rad. But, yeah, so, so it's, it's, it like encourages you to, cause you unlock levels really generously, like, like you unlock them really quickly. So, so you can like jump ahead and jump back and do like when you're stuck, just like move on and just, just, and that's easily the best way to play. Cause mm-hmm. if you just keep bashing your head against a puzzle, you'll hate it. But it's that's like, I fucking, that's why Jelly No Puzzle actually got good during that one <laughs> update when you're just like, Oh, now I can skip three levels at a time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I th- it, it's. It's everything. It's you know the levels unlock easily. It's optional puzzles as well as mm-hmm. normal puzzles. It's 
you never gain your abilities, you just gain better understanding of the abilities you have. It's it's interacting with systems that are really clear and always do the thing you expect mm-hmm. them to. It's it's yeah. fucking beautiful. I, I like the disconnect between like just having the thing that you have to do in order to progress, yeah. but also the optional thing that makes sure that you've understood the concepts that you're mm. uh, being shown and then achieving something because you were paying attention. Like yeah, That's yeah. perfect puzzle design. That's like you're so good at this, you're doing extra credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, see, each level, each world also ends with a level, like, at most levels have the three memory blocks that you collect, and the last level has, like, a golden key, which I guess will probably come up later in the story. The story is boring. Sorry, it doesn't matter. You're just, uh, you know, opening a robot. You're uh, healing robots, you're <laughs> fixing robots to get sent in by... I, it's made by the same people who made Blocks of Matter, and I kind of I didn't hated like Blocks, blocks of Matter. matter. Mm, yeah. Mm. Whereas this... It's, it's part of it is that there's no, um, that input is never a barrier. Like, you just click where you want to go and you like click on a block and you right click to spit it out and it's that simple. And there's never any barrier to just doing something. It's, it, whereas Blocks of Matter was also a platformer game and it had problems with like you trying to spit a thing into a place while also jumping around yeah. and just really garbage. Whereas this, oh god. Actually, Swapper has some problems with that as well. Oh, so, mm. but, uh, I like Swapper. I like Swapper. Oh, I feel like Swappy. Uh, swappy. 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 Yeah. <laughs> the, swappy. swappy, the lead character. Swappy. Of swappy. <laughs> <laughs> the mascot. Yeah. Swappy and Swappy. Yeah. Um, the Swapper, I feel like um, a big part of the, the fun of that game is it felt really like squishy and organic. Oh, yeah. No, so yeah. You, you feel like as disconnected from the, the character that you're embodying as the character does. Yeah, yeah. I feel like really portrayed quite a lot mm. which I like but I don't think that helps if it does get in it interferes with gameplay I think mm. you have to find some other way mm-hmm. like for it to be really effective yeah. that's just me <laughs> <laughs> what do I know <laughs> I only do this for a living I've only done a hundred episodes of this yeah, fucking thing exactly we still haven't figured it out yeah <laughs> well, you figure we would have decided what the perfect video game is by now it might be Tetra Bot it Co. might be yeah it's, 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 it's probably <laughs> it's the trombone actually so that's why they never change it yeah. yeah. just keep, oh. keep up it yeah. <laughs> you catch any new Pokemons yes oh. well yes and I caught some new Pokemons that are in the old Pokemon uh, games. So right. yes and no. I, I I learned how to Mega Evolve. Yeah, I got that too. I got thing. Mega Evolve. Yeah. I got a Lucario. Yeah. <laughs> mega Evolution is a thing. Yeah. I got that Lucario. I got uh, Blastoise Mega yeah. Evolve into. I got a Venusaur. So that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Pokemon's a game. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> I got Wobbuffet. They're yeah, pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah, I think I got one of them. Yeah. I think I fought a Wobbuffet. I don't know if I got it. Mm. I spent ages uh, training up a Pokemon to get it to evolve mm-hmm. so it could learn fly. Yeah. And it turns out that even though its Pokedex description is like, oh, it flies faster than the speed of sound. It can't. It can't fly. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> do you, um, do you have a TM mule or a uh, HM mule? No, I, I tend to spread yeah. them out. Oh, uh, no, evenly. I just have one useless character. Like, it's um <laughs> like a little panda that's eating a flower that is just my oh, like, yeah. call my HM Pan, gone. Panchamp. Yeah, yeah Panchamp. Um, Panchamp can smash I'll, I'll, somehow. I'll, I'll give them yeah, I'll give them moves that are like... You have your, you have so your, surf is actually a good combat move as well. So I'll give good. that to Blastoise. It's and bad fly for if you're good. in team battles though, because surf hits everybody around, yeah, including you, your partner. You lame people in team battles. Yeah, yeah. Flying solo over here. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, no nerds. Probably already way too much Pokemon talk. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm figuring out a mix in my team about like what I have for when I go out catching Pokemons because like Venusaur is really good for that. So you can do a, you can seed an enemy and then you can poison it so that it's oh, continually yeah. losing health in a increments rather than like doing a lot of damage. Yeah, uh, that's pretty good. I like having a gym battle team as well as I just like my walking around Pokemons. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's good strategy. Should I not bother? That game's no. I, I like these new Pokemon's. <laughs> They're pretty, pretty good. good, even though the story starts really, really slow. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? You, like you meet that guy, and he seems a bit weird, and you yeah, go like, like, "Oh well, you'll yeah. be bad." And yeah, and I'm like four gym badges in, mm. twenty five hours in, and yep. it's still like it's still not like, "Oh yeah, he's the head of Team mm-hmm. Flare." Yeah, which is like oh, he's a dude. He's, he's a guy who keeps yeah. and he keeps like calling me mm-hmm. to say hello. Mm-hmm. 
I know you're bad. Stop it. Have you unlocked Please. the... I don't want to go bowling. <laughs> <laughs> Have you um, unlocked the big city yet? Like the rest of it? Is it still blacked out? I think I, I just finished the power plant. Right, I haven't cool. been back to big and city just yet. Just there, so, um, so yeah. Because oh, I want a fly, power plant. I want to fly all the... Oh, so the, there's a really great it's thing about that. Is that um, <laughs> they, there are workers all over this town going, you can't come past here, there's a blackout. When there are lights lit up, yeah. standing by behind you. Yeah, so when it's yeah. night time, the buildings are all lit up behind you. It's like, yeah. no. No, you can't. <laughs> what? What's, what up? Yeah. <laughs> uh, have right. you been able to get in? Oh, no, I guess you haven't. Um, there's like a fashion store in that city that goes like, you don't look fancy enough. You can't come <laughs> in here. I don't know. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Maybe it's a galling comment on the bureaucracy of that region. Mm. Like, um, I've been told there's a blackout, and I won't believe that there isn't one yeah. until, until I'm told. And then you go to like the power plant, and everyone's just like, well, there's a blackout, but I don't know. Everyone's <laughs> just standing around, and then it's only when you go in, like, oh, there are bad guys in here. Mm. And like, Why well, was no one doing anything about like that? Like, there are like the host- police in Pokemon. Yeah, there are hostages <laughs> inside that. Pokemon. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's just me strolling in. Yeah, like, I'm not. There are at least four other people in this world who are stronger than me because <laughs> they're gym leaders. <laughs> Get yeah. one of them to come in. <laughs> Deal with it. And I don't know why beating your Pokemon up like makes you want to leave this place. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. But it was that simple. Oh, you yeah. beat my Pokemon. Now yeah. I have to use my shit gum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like to imagine that all of the people in the city that are telling you that you can't go in because there's a blackout are like the um, the guys in Psychonauts that are they're road workers. Sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Word, like a road worker in a trench coat going, no, there's a blackout. Sorry. <laughs> um, I have played almost no games this week except for A6A Hack. It's great. I'm playing a lot of that A6A Hack. It's the best roguelike. It's a very, it's very, very good. I like it. It's very. It's difficult. not the best roguelike. Tom's <laughs> making a face. I just want to have that shown yeah, for the record. I think, I think Pro probably is. I don't know. Oh, that's too big a question. Yeah, exactly. If, if, oh, if there is a best roguelike, roguelike it'll be made by Michael Bro. I think. <laughs> yeah. I like yeah. I like Ace's Day Hack a lot. It's very difficult. I feel like mm. it often puts you in a situation where you can't win, but it's short enough that it doesn't actually matter. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah. There are only eight stages. That's yeah. it. So yeah. yeah, which I think is good design because I think the thing about roguelikes is they're too long. Yes. Like mm. I play something like Dungeons of Dreadmore, which has just got too much uh, fucking yeah, content. It's, it's I've got halfway through that game, and, yeah. uh, so I've had enough of this now. Yeah. I'm, I'm absolutely satisfied that I've yeah. played this game. That's exactly. the thing. It takes you like an hour to get to like the second zone and you're just like, oh. And you God. lose. which and But losing is fun. So mm. <laughs> I would put forward FTL as the best one. It's pretty good. It's a good roadwork. I feel like that's a case where there actually could be more variety. I like FTL, oh, but yeah, I don't think you can say it's the yeah. best example. <laughs> just downloaded a game for the... Um, well, I had had it on the iPhone, but the screen was a bit too small. It's called Star Command, and it's kind of like FTL. Uh, yeah, but it's, yeah. it's more ribbing on Star Trek than than FTL yeah. was, which is quite good. I, I didn't really <clears throat> like that. There's no? a lot of micromanagement in it, mm. rather than. <clears throat> so like it's all about yeah. moving the dudes around. I know FTL has that as well. Yeah. Like it seems like harder to do. It's a bigger ship that you're in. Yeah. Well. Yeah, and the controls are a bit deadly. Yeah, I, I like got to a point in that game where now I'm like fighting some machine god or some shit. I don't know what the fuck yeah, is happening. I haven't played that much of it, but I just like that one of the um, one of the ships that uh, one of the races has got is called a instead of the Klingon bird of prey, it's like the prey bird or something. It's just it's like so <laughs> obviously ripping on Star Trek that <laughs> they haven't even made an effort to disguise it. It's yeah. great. Well, I also played some uh, Space Team earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. still good. Which I don't feel we have to add anything to, but Space <laughs> Team's still fun. Mm-hmm. Cool. Space Space Team's rad, I think, because like the Smoko games, does a good job of just like here are the constraints of this device. Let's let's yeah. make the best game we can. Yeah, and, uh, I like that. I feel like Smoko do a real good job of just uh, you know using the weird stuff you can do with iPads in a way which isn't, like, obnoxious, you know? It mm. just is, yeah. mm-hmm. feels like, the, oh, yeah, you know, there's the bit in Year Walk where you twist dolls, like, body around, uh, uh, which is super creepy, uh, by the way. Incredibly creepy, but it feels, you know, that's what you... There do are there. more creepy good. dolls in Device 6. Great! <laughs> One scared the shit out of me. Oh, yeah. Nice. Dog, dog. If you're playing that game with headphones, then there's a certain point where it's just, ah, okay. 
Yeah, we'll I'm all, thank you. I think I was actually <laughs> um, like sitting next to Lydia and she was watching like anime or something and I'm sitting there playing this game and I was just like jumping out my skin. It's like, this doesn't look cool. <laughs> <laughs> I just recognised that we didn't ask her questions. Oh no, we didn't. No, we didn't. Oh, yes. no we're not going to have all our oh, good questions. Oh, no. Question oh, section. It's episode 100. Oh, we can't have questions. Oh, 100 questions. <laughs> Please. Go <laughs> back and answer all our favourites. What <laughs> Pokemon would you fuck if you were in Spain? <laughs> <laughs> the ice cream Pokemon. <laughs> no, the Pokemon is a set of keys, actually. How, how do you have sex with a Pokemon with boxing gloves on? <laughs> do you have the boxing gloves on or the Pokemon? <laughs> There's only one Pokemon that could be. No, there's a few. Yeah, 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 Hitmonchan. Hitmon. Yeah. Hitmon um, Hitmon Lee didn't have boxing gloves on. Oh. There's, there's another one that had boxing gloves, I can't remember what it's called. Machamp. No. No, he didn't. Y'all, he said like forearms. Y'all fucking nerds. Head and muscles <laughs> and a thong. Poke a thong. I played some more Wind Waker HD. Yeah. You're taking yeah. selfies? Yeah, I took some selfies. Right. I'd taken selfies in inappropriate places. So it took one of me uh, fighting a boss as it was swooping down. It's like a giant bird boss that was swooping down to come eat me. So I was like, self time. <laughs> <laughs> really funny. Yeah, my friend. <laughs> um, <laughs> and have you seen um, the black skin head? I have. Yeah. yeah, I made a joke about it last night. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah we we were listening really to black skin head, and I said, "Oh, is that that song from Wind Waker?" It yeah. was great. It tore the house down. I, I don't know what that joke means. <laughs> <laughs> so when you take pictures in Zelda, uh, you can make faces. You can use the control stick to like change his face. Uh-huh. You can make it look like he's so talking and dogs singing. Link singing black skin. <laughs> <laughs> it's really really good. That um, really funny. Yeah, that game's pretty good. They fixed a lot of. Stu- well, not a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. but just enough stuff. I hear there's it. a sale that sails regardless of wind direction now. Yes, that's pretty okay, good. Great. I feel like it's cheating, actually. Yeah. But Real the, purists when, got the, when the you one are, now when they needed to switch directions. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you're casting the spell now as well, it used to, like, you'd get one out, cast the spell, and then it would, like, show you it again. Just be like, yes, you're well sure. done, you cast this spell. Whereas now it's just like, you do it, and it goes, yep, that's the spell, it doesn't show you again, and then it just does it. Yeah. yeah. That's much all you need. I, I remember watching the uh, speed run on uh, Awesome Games Done Quick last year of Wind Waker, and yeah. it was really impressive. Because, <laughs> you know, the whole thing is you can't really fall in the ocean, or you die. Um, well, not like immediately, but you, you're not supposed to be able to swim. No, 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 you can't swim. And, and they were. So mm. <laughs> they weren't using the boat for most of it. So <laughs> yeah. it was very impressive. I love it in those speed runs where they just like, they, they glitch out. Like, through the geometry in this one spot and then land on a pipe just <laughs> under the level that's yeah. like left by a level designer mm-hmm. who forgot to remove it. And yeah. yeah. Use, oh god, it's amazing. There I was watching the, uh, the, the 20 minute Ocarina of Time one the other day. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, because then you like go through the thing before you've even gone to the Deku Tree yeah. and then you go right to the well, you have to go through Deku Tree, I think, but like you have to uh, do some weird stuff. And then you just glitch on a child link at the end, having defeated Ganondorf already. Great. So. Very good. Yeah. I uh, sat through some of the Gone Home commentary as well. I, uh, yeah. I haven't yeah. done that yet. He, if you go to the the speedrun room, <laughs> he discusses the um, the idea of speedrunning Gone Home and like the idea of like doing the thing within like forty seconds. Which, yeah. Like he discusses the idea of just like. Um, appreciating a game on your own merits rather than the stuff that he's decided to do in order to convey narrative. So I think it's an important thing for a designer to like understand that the way mm. that people appreciate your game doesn't necessarily correspond to the way that you yeah. make a game, Jonathan Blow. Um, <laughs> but he also had talked about the idea of somebody picking up dialogue entries in uh, the most efficient route, which I think is really funny. Like, like still being conveyed narrative but not giving a shit about like hearing it at all that seems really cool I've wanted to see like a full diary mm. entry run of Gone Home and yeah. like, see how quickly someone can do that because that seems like fun to me yeah. you know I, I don't know like I feel like there have been sarcastic speed runs of Gone Home mm. and I'm like no whatever. there's no such thing as an ironic orgasm <laughs> you <laughs> can yeah you have to have to do it still yeah yeah, yeah. 
I, uh, I, I like Gone Home so I need to go and play that uh, commentary because it seems like it'd be rad mm-hmm. uh, I also recommend uh, well on Rock Paper Shotgun these have always been good but uh, uh, Robert Yang does the Level With Me yes. uh, interviews where he talks to level designers I heard that and they, it's very good yeah they so he did it before and yeah it was weird how they did it beforehand they didn't so, like, well, quite, so they're talking about it pre-success which is quite interesting to hear I don't know what that means Sorry, it looks like there's a big rumble going on. Like there's a big rumble. I can fix that. I don't know what it sounds like because the speaker. I think there's there's a washing machine going somewhere. So maybe, or it might be a little fan there. Um, Sorry, just wanted. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, So level with me interviews. Like he did them before with a bunch of people, and he basically interviews level designers and then gets them to contribute to a like game thing that he makes. Yeah. So so last time he made a game that was. Uh, really confusing and weird in the source engine where at one point a bunch of shells that are wrapped around invisible barrels like fall into the sea it's really uh, it's very <laughs> strange uh, oh, oh but it did have that scene where you had the uh, the broken down uh, Portal 2 robots that had the follow indicator from Call of Duty above them <laughs> just like crawling around not being able to move properly just with follow above them <laughs> it's pretty funny um, and now it seems like they're making a much much it's in Unity, so it's not. Uh, it's from the ground up, and it's a lot, lot weirder. It seems like, but anyway, he interviews level designers and talks. To, so it's people from, um, you know, AAA studios, and then people like the guy making Frax and the guy, and you know, Steve Gaynor making, and you know, loads of these people have AAA, uh, you know, credentials as well as the indie games that they make, and just seeing them talk about stuff like, uh, like. About how like new level designers will try do something spherical when yeah, it doesn't yeah. make any sense. Oh, that, oh, that was fascinating to yeah. read. Like the idea that something being slightly more visually interesting is actually not all that visually yeah. interesting. It's more like that it's smarter to make make your level in straight angles because that makes it less work for you. He um and then not... he talks about this, the idea of somebody um, guitar soloing a hospital ball. Yes, I don't know. I don't know if that was in. Um, God, that conversation with Steve Gaynor on the podcast, I can't remember. Yeah. But the idea of somebody guitar soloing a hospital wall really, yeah, yeah. resonates with me. Maybe that was a discussion of Lost of Us or something. Maybe, yeah. yeah. I remember reading that exact phrase. Yeah. I can't remember if it was the same thing. I think, it, uh, yeah, Robert Yang did a post about the, like, there was some forum where they were discussing assets from The Last of Us, like mm-hmm. just showing this fire truck and being like, look, this fire truck looks like garbage. And he's like, yeah, well, you're not supposed to look you're at this gonna, fire truck yeah. for 10 minutes, <laughs> like, checking out all its stuff. It's supposed to be a thing. You walk past. Well, I had a problem with that with um, Arkham Origins. I keep, like, <laughs> needing to fucking bury those titles. Yeah. I mean, I know they have a brand, but oh, it's indistinguishable. Fuck brand. Um, there's a bit in that aforementioned hotel uh, garage where there is a massive truck and it's carrying bumper cars. It seems sure. like it's a recycled asset from somewhere else where that would be more relevant, but... <laughs> So later yeah. on in the game, bumper cars are confirmed. Maybe, yeah, I don't know, but <laughs> I haven't seen anybody a- anywhere any to confirm. It just it, like it's a weird difference between like the fire truck, which doesn't look good. Well, they've and... got the funfair, I guess, where Joker lives. But he doesn't. In... Oh, I don't want to spoil. This Joker might not even be in it. You don't know. Joker, oh. Joker, do. <laughs> yeah. We all saw what happened at the end of Arkham City. It's an origin. It's it's an origin. I know. To... So, oh, but maybe you just it's a do a time spoiler for Arkham City. City. Oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, we were talking about level design. Oh, I also like the idea of um, things, uh, discussing the idea of things feeling um, too um, blocky, I guess. I can't remember the exact conversation around so it. So it's the, the idea that to <clears throat> make a good level, to make a level that you can work on easily, it needs to be 90 degree angles, it needs to be up, down, left, right, just mm. just to make your life less difficult. But you don't want the player to think that that's what's going on. If you're if you're mm. making Bioshock, for example, where you want it to seem like this weird underwater city where there's all this stuff going on in different places and this like kind of organically grown, sort of um, organically spread out. So you just <laughs> like put 45 degree angles in the in the mm-hmm. in these. Like in the middle corridors. of corridors, <laughs> and then that looks, it feels to the player as if they're going through a angled room, but they're not. They're just going through the same ninety degree angles everyone else is, and it's it's interesting. I really like just him talking about like how much he likes uh, making just shooter levels. You know, mm. yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to see that level of affection for something like that, which you know, yeah. 
he, I guess you don't. Does he? I, mean, I think you guys start in fear three. Yeah, fear yeah, mode, yeah. not fear three. The, the, the Perseus day. mandate. Yes. Sandy <laughs> so talked about that as in like it was good to work on something that nobody played. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. That's, yeah a lot. I love it. I love uh, seeing when Robert Yang shows them like just a picture of like a bit from a level and just like okay what was going on here what were you thinking when you made this little because mm. you don't you don't think about that you think like the completed product you don't think about like you think oh I needed to get this room done yeah but it's fucking just, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not privy to the thought process that goes behind why is this load bearing thing here yeah, yeah, yeah. why is that light turned off and, and I love that they all remember they're like oh yeah I think yeah. I did the curve and this other guy did, did <laughs> put the textures yeah. in this order and I wanted to change it but he's like wow <laughs> yeah and this is fucking something that somebody will see for half a second yeah. but it's yeah it's absolutely important mm. yeah. yeah I mean we talked before about the idea of a light switch being off doesn't designate a real world it just doesn't designates busy work which yeah. I think is cool yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's like that's quite eye opening now that I recognise that. Mm. Yeah. Although, yeah, apparently every wire and gone home. Yeah, is actually corresponds custom, to yeah, yeah. custom made. But There's that, no like yeah. repeat wires. Mm. But I'm not, so I think crazy. that's I think that's really good world building. Yeah. I really yeah, yeah, appreciate yeah. that so much. You mm-hmm. know, yeah. but I I noticed that when I was playing it through, and I thought it was amazing. I actually think the outlooks look a little bit terrible <laughs> up close, but I think that's going back to the fire truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going back to the fire truck is the episode title, by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, you have any questions? I think I think we are. I think we're at questions point. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, okay. I have a few. If you want okay, to read cool. them out, yeah, yeah. Don't hit me. There we'll you go. From there. Uh, from there. Okay. Uh, question from utterly horrid, your friend of mine, Gillian. Uh, video games. What? what? Right. Yes. No. 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 Oh, no. Oh, no. Definitely uh, not. Good. Bring it back. Very, very clever. Mm-hmm. That's the name of our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> J- Julian Benson. How much wood would a wad chuck chuck if a woodchuck <laughs> were playing Settlers 7? <laughs> I'll Settlers let you feel this one, Thomas. Seven. 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 Seven, yeah. Seven chucks. Kiss with... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad we're doing the question section right now. This is <laughs> real classics. We're gonna go out on high. What's your favorite? <laughs> Are we ending? <laughs> is this yeah, it? this is it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's your favorite things which involve the number one hundred? When is Half Life One Hundred coming out? Is Tangler made of dicks? <laughs> <laughs> ah. Tangler's made of pasta. Yeah. I quite like Alex's one. Yeah, I quite like that one, actually. Uh, did you notice how Saints Row 4 has one white guy in the whole game and he's an awful nerd everyone hates? <laughs> I did notice that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Unless you play as a white guy, which fuck no. you if you do that. Like, I was <laughs> Tilda Swinton. So. <laughs> I was a devil and then I was a horse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh god like some of the final <coughs> scenes in the game where you're like like strutting your stuff and the cutscenes all serious and you just got a fucking mm. horse master <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I um, yeah. really like the side scrolling beat em up section actually like your character corresponding yes. to what you're wearing yeah. as well I, I, like just, I, oh god yeah. I was like spent so long just like okay Trying how did figure they out, do this yeah, right? exactly <laughs> like you like reduce the model down to yeah like, the, pixel the, just, version yeah like, complicated like, rendering yeah. method and, yeah because like, it, it also it, the collision method uh, mm. I, I know, really it doesn't fucking it. make sense, it's but I'd love to hear cool. about it. Super yeah. cool. Because cool. cool. they had to do it that way, otherwise it, it's not your character yeah. in there. It's, yeah. But it's, yeah. Well, it's really smart. Yeah. So I don't understand, they did a different thing for when you did the, the Usher missions, where they make you look like a character, so your other counterpart will look like an evil version of you. Yeah. Yes. I didn't understand what they were doing by giving you a form. But... I think... Uh, they could have done a better joke with just adding an extra goatee. Yeah, on yeah. your player like, character. <laughs> yeah, I don't. But the trouble is, like, I bet a lot of people play with goatees. Yeah, that's, that, that's the problem. Yeah. Just add like a bigger goatee. Goatee on the goatee. goatee. Oh. That's that's the answer. Answer. Yeah. They should have uh, like an eye patch that goes like. There's probably an eye patch mm. in the game, but an eye patch that goes over the other eye. Yeah. So if you are wearing that. <laughs> 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 Great. Um, 101 donations. Chris, again, will there ever be a Pokemon game where the Pokemon overthrow their human oppressors? I hope so. Within my lifetime. 
How close are we to a cure for video games? <laughs> Any to suck season currently working on it. She has to be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> um, Maple Deroney kills a Kilsington. Um, most interesting obscure video game. Go. Hmm. Find obscure. Yeah. Well, I mean, most interesting. Well, I, I've been, I've heard of this cool little obscure game called Call of Duty. Yeah. Have you heard of that? <laughs> Pretty wild. I've been following um, obscure video games on Tumblr. So just a Tumblr that posts like GIF sets of of obscure video games mm. that like you've never heard of and they're just weird. <laughs> like <laughs> just you're just watching this out of context thing of a cop beating up a giant octopus. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pretty cool. Oh, the best. What about octopus do to you, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Doing crimes. Oh, I'm trying to think of something that's like Obscure enough to impress the other people in this room, which is uh, complicated. Our whole show is like obscure games. Yeah, yeah. Obscure bullshit. Right. Which just, which yeah. just hits the blustering this whole time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Um, and still no one thinks we're cool. So. Yes. Good damn. <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. I played this, um, I, iOS game. I haven't talked about it on the podcast, I don't think maybe I have. Uh, iOS game called Black Bar, which is. You did actually. I did, yeah. yeah. It's about censorship. And you fill in the blanks that have been blanked out by this evil government. The story is a bit politically. It gets really. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't disagree with this politics too much, but it's a bit on the nose. <laughs> it's just yeah. But I really like the one was ah the one that was about the news cycle, um, where you have to cater the news cycle to the whims. Oh, of that's the one that Lucas yeah. Um, yeah. Whatever did, did for did before, bit, before uh, Papers, Papers Please. Please. Yeah, yeah, time, so, yeah, yeah it was literally yeah. like a little two minute throwaway flash game, but it's really interesting. Yeah. It like actually it ties into the Papers, Please world as well, which I think is really cool. Yeah. In one of the countries. Yeah, one of the other, yeah, one of the other uh, countries. Yeah. In, uh, fake sort of. I, I want to imagine that universe exists in the same one as all the uh, like 30 Flights of Loving. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's that. a, an ongoing kind of universe, sort of. It's her mm. most obscure game ever, Elevator Source, probably. Oh, yeah. Elevator Source. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably the most obscure game I've ever played. I want to go back to Elevator Source, because they were talking about adding loads of new levels. I played a shitload of Elevator Source. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Elevator Source meta game where it's Lobby Source and you refuse to go <laughs> I yeah, I played it with uh, with Tom and, and Joel, and yeah, we were just like one, one of us would be in the lift, and the other two would just be like, no, no, no. <laughs> it was amazing. Like, because randoms would come in, we were just in a public server, and random people would come in and just stand in the lift, like, what are you guys doing? It's like, no, this is not the game that I yeah, want to play. Don't try and railroad my elevator experience. Yeah. Oh, I, I really like elevator source because, like, not only were the actual like elevator stops funny. But, like, the game itself was basically make your own fun. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that I liked about it is that loads of people came into it expecting it to be a real game. And then they they come in yeah. and then, then they, they do, like, two or three floors. And they'd be like, what the fuck is this shit? And it's like, what did you expect? You, you literally know, got in a lift. <laughs> 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 that's all the, that's the, the entire interaction you have with this game is that you walk into a lift. Or you don't, I suppose, as we chose not to. But so these people so, so get, there's a moral choice. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> and these people are getting really, really mad that this person has just made a complete joke of a game. <laughs> missing See, the point. It's right? super interesting, actually, about being in the lobby. As we were doing stuff like trying to jump on stuff you're not supposed to jump on, I think we yeah. were making a game out of this utter non-game. Yeah. <laughs> we were just finding game where there's no game to be found. Yeah. Oh. Making but, your own fun. I feel like... Uh, Elevator Source should team up with the Stanley Parable would be one of the endings. That would be an amazing <laughs> ending for the Stanley Parable. There is one of my favourite tropes in uh, Stanley Parable that's also in like, Flights of Loving, where you go into a museum of stuff. Yes, that I love are, the museum. Art assets. But, like, that's a thing that I need to oh, see in more games. As well. yeah. yeah, I guess that is true. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's, uh, like, there's even in a Call of Duty as well. Like, you can see, like, a museum set up for the stuff that like, I think that's really fun. Cool, I really think it's good. And I think yeah. the one in Stanley Parable as well is really well designed. Yeah, like, it's absolutely. a good looking museum. Yeah. I want to go to that. Like museum. the 30 parts of Loving one actually like sort of impacting the story. Yeah, not kind of. Really. Or like being the throwaway yeah. gag about this thing being too well receptive to a piece of art yeah. and people standing around. It draws some threads and some themes together. Yeah. I really like it. I re- did, did we talk about Stanley Parable on the show last week? We didn't. I wanted to say because I I played yeah. Stanley Parable this week and it's rad. I really like yeah. it. It's, it's really good. good. I like I like the demo more. Oh, that's the conversation we did have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. did you really want to play it? Yeah. yeah. 
do, I, I do like the demo more. I, I don't think that's an impossible thing to... I, I they achieve different things. Yeah, yeah. The demo resonates more with me. But. Well, I think one of the things is that um, I, it is much more of a HD remix than I was perhaps expecting. Oh, yeah, sure. You know, it is the original game. It's got a bunch of extra stuff. Mm. Like, it's not the same, but, you know... You, you definitely feel like the mod was like the scratch version of the uh, sure. the, the full version, uh, but I do really like it. I, I'm a big Stanley Parable fan. Yeah, some of the like like you said, some of the the satire, I guess, in mm. it feels a little dated yeah. now. Weirdly, yeah, it's only been like a year. But. Yeah, and it's some of it's a little bit like oh, I'm a bit kind of a point thing now. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit, yeah, but I don't think it's like obnoxious. No, you know? it's not just at all. yeah. Not as like actually the museum one that I'm talking about. If you don't do, or if you do or don't do the thing that she says to do, then she. By the way, that's a spoiler. spoiler. Um, <laughs> then oh, um, that game's ruined for me. Now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I haven't played it. Um, <laughs> then like, he's just he's just saying that because there's a lady character yeah. in it. He's like <laughs> fucking <Yeah>. out <laughs> representing the gamer. Yeah. God damn it! <laughs> oh, God. oh, did you read that? No, I'm not going to bring this up on the show. Yeah, we should probably just not do the show now. <laughs> Um, also from Maple Deroni. Uh, so that's our most interesting obscure game. Um, that's, that's what's your, terrible. what's your favourite game of fuel? Josh, you drank a Mountain Dew. I've got a Mountain Dew. I, I have right consumed here. Mountain Dew and Doritos today, so <laughs> I'm doing quite well, I think. <laughs> I'm playing Moon Waker with some whiskey every time I play it. That's good. It's quite a good way to play that. That's probably a great way to play whiskey. Good whiskey life. waker. You'd be yeah. like, you're sailing, drinking whiskey, yeah. and, like <laughs> crashing my boat into things. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of whiskey? That's important. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. I bought it in um, Portugal. Okay. I went over. Portuguese. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Scottish whiskey. I just can't remember the name of it. But it's like a 12 year old. Ooh, really nice. Sounds tasty. Drinking a 12 year old while you're playing as a 12 year old. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good. Why are you playing a game made for 12 year olds? Oh, <laughs> sick. Um, Link is bad uh, boy, so he is one of the Um, also from Maple Deroni, favorite Saints Row character? Um, robot. Really? <laughs> 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 Paul. <laughs> Paul's pretty good. <laughs> uh, I honestly, I just love the boss so much. Like, yeah, yeah. every every version Your of boss. character. Yeah, is, you know, is that a valid awesome. answer? I think the lead is fucking amazing in that game, considering how customizable they are. Yeah. Um, they have very strict morals. Yep. In the sense that they don't really have any strict morals. I'm a big fan. I'm actually a huge fan of Kinsey. Yeah. Uh, I think Kinsey's right. Yeah, Kinsey's really good. Yeah, Kinsey's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a real shame that Oleg isn't in Saints Row Four. True. Yeah. Uh, Maybe in Saints Row Christmas. <laughs> Because I really liked the Oleg Kinsey uh, like relationship in Saints Row Three. I thought it was cute. I'm trying to like prove that they're smarter than each other. I think. Yeah, I guess kind of. But I don't know. There's not not so much of that. It was just you know they were, they were cute. <laughs> and mm-hmm. Oleg was like, "I'm going to confess my love for Kinsey at the end." So well, I feel like I need to mention Zemo, even though he's probably yeah, not, he's not my favorite yeah. character, ah. but yeah, it's my favorite gimmick. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah he's back in Saint Save Christmas. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Question from Bunbuster, um, whose Twitter handle I can't even see because the name's too long. <laughs> uh, is it true that in the future everything will become a MOBA and will take flying Dotas to work? A MOBA roguelike. I'm not answer this question. Actual question. A MOBA you... roguelike inspired by Dark Souls. Uh, actual question. Will you play Democracy 3 and tell me if it's any good? And by question, I mean booming demand. We played some of it at uh, events, didn't we? Bunbuster? I don't think we played say, Democracy 3. No, you played it, didn't you? I, I played, played it on stream. stream. Oh, um, was that Democracy 3? I think it was 2. Mo- no, Democracy 3 was um, shown at Res. It was right next to Red Shirt. Oh, in that case, I think I have played yeah. Democracy oh, 3. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I thought it was... But my, my trouble is, all I wanted to do was abolish everything. <laughs> sure. It's duplicate communism. If you do that, then the game mechanics are like, you can't just have a revolution. You have to have popular support for the revolution. I'm like, nah! I just want to destroy everything and build a perfect society. Um... Which, like, you know, you can sort of work towards that, but, like, my trouble is I, I didn't have the patience for the game mechanics. That's, that's exactly the problem with communism. Nobody has the patience. <laughs> <laughs> I just want all my communism now. I don't want to have to work <laughs> for it. off the roof. <laughs> I want to stop working and abuse the system now. <laughs> no one got my good John Campbell. Um, the little girl that's painting. I assume you mean. Yeah. <laughs> no, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, final question. Linux powered rifle at Zoop something or other. 
is uh is or is not Link a fucking elf? Yes. No. 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 She's got like a... point ears. He's an alien. He's an alien. 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 Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, not even. He looks like an elf. Why does he hate dwarves? It looks like an elf. Why does he and quacks like an elf? There aren't a fucking elf. Why, why does, does he, he use a, a bow? Yeah. He doesn't live in a tree. Oh, why? He does. Why, why does he, he why is he a with hippie? animals? Depends which link you're talking about here. <laughs> why, does, why is he an elf? <laughs> why, why does he spend all his time kissing nature? Yeah. Why does he try and wake up the windfish? <laughs> 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 This was perfectly timed. Hello, Phoebe. We're just finishing up the show. Hello. Thanks to the guys. Is Link an elf? Sorry. Is Link an elf? Is Link an elf? Is Link an elf? Um, no. Yeah. Definitive. Team okay. Not an elf. And that will bring us to the end of episode one hundred. I'm not even going to do the going stars. Okay, episode. fair enough. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed 100 episodes of our terrible voices and mouths and faces. Here's the next 100. Ah, uh, yeah. I've been Martin. <laughs> I've been joined by Matt, Josh, and Tom. This and Patrick. Isn't Hello, this isn't goodbye. Episodes. And this Layla. Is... Yo. And Phoebe. <laughs> and Phoebe. Godspeed, bro, baby. <laughs> Mine pointed at me when he said Josh, and Josh when he said Tom. I got um, confused. So we have to swap <laughs> it's, it's, it's an easy, it's an easy confusion. Bye. Bye.